Hey, my little schnitzelhosens. I'm Luke and Ikora. Welcome to And Now What? Today we'll talk about the importance of sleep, the danger of lacking it, the science behind it and in front of it. <gasps> how much you should get and stay till the end of the video to get some tips on how to get more restful nights. Most people think that sleep is just the body doing nothing. Stop sleeping, you lazy schnitzel. There is nothing further from the truth. Well, there are probably some things that are further from the truth. That's a weird expression. Some parts of sleep are actually as active as wake states. And I'm not talking about sleep or moonwalking. I won't go too much into details, but let's look at the four stages of sleep. First, your body and brain slows down and you doze off. Then there's a drop in temperature and the muscles relax. In the third stage, you are in deep sleep, which is the hardest time to wake somebody up. And also the most painful when the alarm rings. Been there? During these phases, the brain cleans itself from toxins related to mental diseases, so it's super important. The last stage is REM. REM like the rock and roll band? No, Jeremy, it stands for rapid eye movement. That's when the brain is as active as wake states, but the body is paralyzed. That's scary. Except eyes and breathing. Can someone wake me up? Because it, it... It's weird. It's an important cycle for memory and cognition. According to Dr. Matthew Walker, sleep expert, REM is like an overnight therapy. It is really important for emotional health. We all go through these different stages many times a night. For some reason that are still quite unclear, in the first part of the night, we go mostly through non-REM cycles, and then in the second part, it's the opposite. And that's why we tend to have more dreams in the morning. All these stages are super duper important for health. Here's why. Did you know that every year in spring on a specific date, there is a 25% increase of heart attacks? Can you guess why? This blew my mind. In three words, daytime savings. If you guessed it right, let me know in the comments. Every year, there's a substantial increase in heart attacks on the day after we jump ahead in time. And study shows that only a week later, numbers go back to normal. That means that only one hour of sleep has a huge impact on people who are vulnerable. Holy shirt! Study also shows that in the fall, there is a 21% drop of heart attacks on the day that we get an extra hour of sleep. Master of time, why, why, why are we still doing this time change thingy? It's killing people, bro. Going through all these stages of sleep takes between 70 to 120 minutes. That's why missing just one hour of sleep doesn't mean that we're missing out just on rest, but we're missing out all these important parts of sleep. You guys, you're gonna love this study. Or, or hate it, depending on how much you sleep. According to Dr. M. Walker, men who sleep less than five hours have smaller testes. Holy blue balls! Mm-hmm. Did you know that testosterone is an important hormone for well-being and health, as well as muscle and bone mass? Did you know that most testosterone is produced while we sleep? Did you know that 15 minutes can save you 15% with... What am I saying? The brainwashing is working. Study finds that people who sleep less than four hours a night have a testosterone level of 10 years their senior and a drop of 29% in sperm count. One, two, three... Where are the others? I don't know, Lieutenant. No new recruits today. Damn it. We're fucked. Isn't it ironic? Shut up, Jeremy. A four hour night's sleep reduces natural killer cell activity by 72%. Killer cell. That sounds like an 80s arcade game in which you are some kind of hitman in post-apocalyptic LA, right? No, here we're talking about the immune system. What that means is that if we're not sleeping enough, we are at a 72% higher risk of catching the regular seasonal flu. We're more sensitive to microbes and even tumors. Nuts and bolts! Sleep loss reduces our ability to interact socially. I already don't know how to do that, so if I don't sleep enough, why would I... Become. Sleep deprivation can cause depression and withdrawal, but also reduces our ability to recognize expressions of anger and happiness. That's weird. Are you happy? Are you startled? I, I don't know. I don't know what this is. If you're working in your beach pod, make sure that you get enough sleep because short nights increases your risks to develop obesity by 55% for adults and 89% for children. Holy mozzarella. That's because a sleepy body has a harder time responding to insulin and uh, has a harder time processing fats from the bloodstream. Turn off the Nintendo Switch and go to sleep, Luca. Since the tired body doesn't respond to insulin well, it affects our blood sugar levels. I'm not sensitive to sugar. I'm sensitive. I'm just sensitive. 
A study found that restricted sleep to four hours a night for six nights in a row causes symptoms of pre-diabetes. Holy guacamole. The good news is that only after one week of healthy sleep, those symptoms disappear. Thank God. Now let's talk about beta amyloid. Beta amyloid what? Beta amyloid is a peptide. Peptides like the soap pods that kids swallow for stupid challenges. No, 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 no. A peptide is one of these chemicals we have in our brain. Beta amyloid is a brain chemical related to the activation of certain enzymes as well as protection against oxidative stress. Ah, yeah, no, now I get it. In other words, they are like traffic cops. They help the transfer of information between neurons as well as stopping stress from hurting the brain. You have the right to remain silent, you oxidator. Now the problem with these traffic cops is that once they have served their purpose, they're supposed to be washed away or they turn into toxic plague. Study finds that sleep deprivation is linked to a higher buildup of that toxic plague in the brain. Instead of a nice flow of traffic orchestrated by these traffic cops, you get piles of dead cops creating traffic jams. What a poetic analogy. According to Matt Walker, interruption of deep sleep, that third stage we talked about earlier, is linked to the buildup of that toxic plague and development of Alzheimer's disease. And that's why I hate being woken up. I must have some kind of unconscious sleep deprivation protection system. Okay, thanks for these wonderful news. Now, what do I do? What do I do? Chillax, Max. We'll get to that. How much sleep should you get? Everyone can function on various amounts of sleep. Like my dad, he can sleep three hours a night and work forever. He may be a robot. Actually, according to specialists, the amount of people who can function at about five hours a night equals to 0%. Depending on your age, you need different amounts of sleep. If you're a newborn watching this video, congratulations, because you're a genius. Okay, now go back to sleep, because you need about 14 to 17 hours of sleep. Toddlers need about 11 to 14 hours. Teens need about 8 to 11 hours. Adults over the age of 25, because that's the time the brain stops developing, need at least 7 hours a night. Did you hear that, Japan? 7 to 8 hours minimum. Most of my Japanese co-workers sleep for 5 hours and then work for 47. Another interesting point that Dr. Maddie Skywalker talks about, during your teen years, you shift your rhythm and you need to go to sleep later and wake up later. They go through a lot of changes in their body and mind and so asking them to wake up early to go to school and perform properly is like asking an adult to wake up at three in the morning and then be productive at work. It doesn't make any sense. Matthew Walker says that school should start at 10 a.m. High school would have been much different if I didn't have to wake up at 6 a.m. every morning. For people who wonder if polyphasic sleep is a good option, and for people who wonder what the hell that word means, it's a fancy way to say chunks of two hours of sleep instead of one night of sleep. For high achievers who think that this would be a way to be more productive, mm, it's not. It's not sustainable. You know who else sleeps in chunks of two hours? Babies. They're not very productive, I think. The hunter-gatherer sleep pattern, or as I call it, la vida loca, because that's what they do in Spain. Six to seven hours per night, and then followed by a siesta or a nap between two to 4 p.m. seem to work pretty well, because apparently there is a natural drop of energy during that time that is unrelated with the amount of carbs you eat for lunch. Yeah, it's not just food coma, the scientists checked. So maybe we are supposed to take a nap every day. Que bueno, papito lindo. Not only the amount of sleep is important, but also the quality of sleep. So in a minute, I will give you more tips on how to get better sleep quality. Night owls versus morning birds. The early birds catch the worm doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. Morning birds or night owls, there isn't a better one than the other. It's just different ways of functioning. All birds are equal. If you know your chronotype and adjust your life to it, you'll get the best sleep. However, because of blue lights and hyperstimulation or anxiety, you might be confused at what your real chronotype is. Check the link below to a chronotype quiz to find out what yours is and let me know in the comments which one you are. Now, let's see how you can optimize your sleep. You know that feeling when the alarm rings right when you're in deep sleep and waking up feels like you're a zombie? <laughs> and then you're tired for the rest of the day. That's like totally the worst. A good way to avoid that is using a sleep tracker. There are plenty of free apps and check below my favorite ones. Nowadays, you can use your phone, your Apple Watch, your Fitbit, or even smart rings to track your sleep. Some of these even measure your heart rates and stuff. What I love about these apps is that they wake you up when you're in light sleep. After I started tracking my sleep, I never feel like a zombie anymore step on Halloween when I want to. Adopt a regular schedule. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. Be a Swiss watch, be a swatch. Wait, is that why it's called Swatch? Wow.
the more regular your sleep pattern is, the easier it'll get for your body to get into a restful rhythm. Avoid alcohol or caffeine late in the day. Caffeine found in coffee, tea, and some soft drinks will interrupt the effect of certain neurotransmitters that are thought to promote sleep. It can take about eight hours for caffeine to wear off. And if you struggle with anxiety, you may be even more sensitive to caffeine. Uh, no, I only had 20 cups of coffee today. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Fine. Drinking alcohol at night may help you fall asleep, but interferes with quality of sleep. So not good. Avoid a high carb diet before going to sleep. Study finds that it may help you fall asleep faster like alcohol, but it will interfere with the quality of sleep. Shut off the blue lights. Electronics like televisions, computers, and smartphones can also lessen sleep quality. Avoid them for at least one hour before bedtime. Instead, try to read a book. <laughs> I can read. Regular exercise promotes sleep quality, but as much as possible, do it earlier during the day. Exercising closer to bedtime may be stimulating, making it harder to fall asleep. Does that mean no hunky punky? No, actually, it helps falling asleep 66% of the time. So, you good. Also, keep your bed for just sleeping and intimacy. Don't eat, watch movies, or work in bed, or you'll associate it with other things than resting and sexy fun time. I believe in miracles! If you smoke, quit. It's not only bad because, well, you know, cancer, but also nicotine is a nervous system stimulant. It speeds your heart rate, raises your blood pressure, and activates fast brain waves, which indicates wakefulness. Create a restful environment. You sleep better in rooms that are cool, dark, and quiet. Think of your room as a bad cave. Creating a relaxing atmosphere can really help falling asleep, especially for people like me, who when they lie down, their brain is like, party time, yeah! My brain starts thinking about all the useless things in the world. Who came up with the idea of a spork? And why didn't they make a sp knife? It would be more useful. Cut and scoop. You can't pick and scoop. That doesn't make any sense. An evening ritual can help you fix that. Study finds that essential oils like peppermint or eucalyptus and lavender can help relax. And oils are a good way to use yourself as a Pavlovian dog. If you fall asleep every night smelling the same essential oil, well, on these nights that you're not in the mood, putting that oil will help you fall asleep. Keep the lights low and play some soft music. Even better, read in a hot bath while listening to Nora Jones. Sing to me, Nora. In fact, people who take a hot bath or shower one to two hours hours before going to sleep have positive results. Keep your room cool. Yeah, you're so cool. Not that way, Jeremy. The body naturally cools down to sleep. So keeping the room at 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 19 degrees Celsius is the best. Totally the best. Choosing the right pillows and mattresses can help, like the brand Birch that uses organic materials and wool to create a natural insulator, which helps regulate temperature. Get $225 off with my link below. If you have hot flashes or sleep apnea, which is deadly untreated, or take medication, make sure to talk to a doctor because these tips are there to help you maximize your sleep and not cure sleep disorders. If you have insomnia, your doctor won't give you sleeping pills right away. With cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, you get long-lasting results versus sleeping pills where you get a rebound insomnia. And that's not the fun kind of rebound. There's a great platform online to seek help called onlinetherapy.com. Not very original, but it is built on the CBT. So that would be the best way for you to find affordable help and you get discounts with my link below. The main cause of insomnia seems to be anxiety. And a great way to deal with that is with meditation or breathing exercises before you go to sleep. Like that 478 breathing exercise. First, place the tip of the tongue behind the upper front teeth. Exhale completely through your mouth, making a whoosh sound. Close your mouth and inhale through your nose, mentally counting to four. Hold your breath and mentally count to seven. Open your mouth to exhale, making a whoosh sound, mentally counting to eight. Repeat this cycle at least three more times. Last resort, use sleep enhancement supplements. 500 milligrams of magnesium per day helps activate those neurotransmitters responsible for sleep. 600 milligram of the amino acid 5-HTP helps the production of serotonin, which is linked to the regulation of sleep. GABA is a compound produced in the brain. It inhibits certain 
neurotransmitters and helps the central nervous system relax. You can take doses of 250 to 500 milligrams a day. You can take melatonin if you are jet lagged or over 50 years old, but it doesn't really help with length or quality of sleep. But don't take too much melatonin for a long period of time or your body will stop producing it and it will be harder for you to fall asleep. And avoid sleeping pills as much as possible because they just stop the symptoms but not really solve the problem of sleep issues. Before I give you the last tip, if you got any value from this video, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now the last tip, did you know that counting sheeps is actually not a good way for you to fall asleep? The study finds that visualizing positive things while in bed helps falling asleep faster than any other kind of distractions. Find on my channel guided meditations to help you sleep. Now let me know down in the comments which tool you're going to use first. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Invest in your sleep. Invest in your future. Love you guys. Peace.